What is up guys? Welcome back for our week four battle of the NBA. This week we are taking on the shiny Weavile, aka Jose, uh, aka the Seattle Cedras. And uh, we, if you didn't watch the team builder, make sure to check it out. Uh, it's the video before this one, or uh, two before this one actually, because the other team builder should be going up um, around like two hours before this video comes out. But anyway, uh, getting back to the battle. Uh, as I said in one of my previous videos, I want to start uh, post commentating some matches. Uh, just to see how much better I play and how um, how comfortable I am while not talking at the same time as playing. Uh, so this one is going to be a post-com. As you can see, we have a replay right here. Uh, now, if you didn't watch the team builder, our team is Mega Scizor, Edward, Cerebus, the Hydreigon, Hocus, Armis Magius, uh, Slowbro, Berlin, uh, Thundolos, our Thunderous, that's it, and Twerk, our Mamoswine. Now, my opponent's team, looking at it right away, I see the Sandcore of Tyranitar and Excadrill, I see the Megalopony, I see the Weezing to counter my Scizor, and then I see Mesprit and Empoleon, and this kind of took me off guard because I was really expecting either the Regenerator Core or Florges to come, and neither did. So right away looking at his team, I see a very common weakness being fighting, and Hydreigon has Super Power and Dark Pulse. It can hit all of my opponent's team, right off the bat, I see that. So I'm like, okay, the only thing that potentially outspeeds me is uh, an Excadrill, even outside of Sand, uh, a Mesprit if it's heavily speed invested, and the Megalopony. Everything else can outspeed me outside of a Scarf. So I can really capitalize on Hydreigon here. So going into this battle, I'm like, okay, what do I lead with? And looking at his team, I was like, okay, Thunderous is probably my best uh, lead matchup because it is my Scarfer. I love to lead with Scarfers uh, that have U-Turn or Volt Switch because they gain momentum and they're usually not outsped by anything. So we'll get right into it here. You guys will see. I lead with Thundolos, and Jose leads with his Lopany. And right away, I'm like, okay, I do not want to take a fake out and lose like 30% of my health. So I switch out, and I go into Berlin, our slow bro, to take the fake out. Uh, obviously, uh, Berlin is built to take on this Megalopony and the Excadrill. So I'm going to take this fake out, no problem. Going to get a little bit of a leftovers recovery back. And I pretty much know that he has to switch here, but I stay in just to potentially get a Scald burn. So I go for Scald as he switches into Empoleon. Scouting what kind of Empoleon set this is as well. I'll see from the damage. And we go for Scald. And do we get the burn? Yes, we do. Turn one. So we are able to burn that thing. Uh, which is amazing. Well, this is actually turn two, but and we also see no leftovers recovery So right away. I'm thinking okay. This is offensive. This is about to hit me with a grass knot I'm like I can take it and I stay in and I get toxic then I'm like, oh, no This is not good. I slack off the damage to gauge how much it would actually do and then I'm thinking okay This Empoleon is probably a support set now, so I can probably switch into um, what, did I, what did I switch into here? He actually pulls a switch into his Mesprit as I go out into Hydreigon, I believe, predicting the fact that he might Grass Knot so that I can resist it. No, I actually go into Scizor. And I'm thinking, okay, this Mesprit is offensive. It has Hidden Power Fire. I've been playing Mesprit lately. I know that this thing can destroy me. I switch into Hydreigon and take a U-turn, unfortunately. Uh, so that shows me that he probably does not have any coverage for Scizor, which is going to come into play a little bit later. Uh, on this turn, he U-turns out into his Megalopony. I'm like, okay, well, I definitely cannot stay in here. I go back into my Slowbro to be able to take the hit, which I know I can. And now he has to deal with something else, taking a Scald. So I take the Fake Out, no problem. I'm going to take Leftovers and Toxic Damage, which is only 6% on this turn. And this time around, uh, he's actually going to switch out into his, uh, his Mesprit. As I pull a Switch, I believe... Uh, into Scizor this time, was it? Uh, could have been Scizor. Yeah, I, I go into Scizor because I know I can take the return. And now I'm threatening him out with a U-turn. And this time I'm actually going to go for it because I know that he probably doesn't have anything to hit me with. He goes for a U-turn. This is all we've seen on this Mesprit so far. So I'm this at this point, I'm thinking it's choice. He switches out into his Weezing, which is obviously his check for Scizor. Makes sense. This is actually going to give me an absolutely free switch into, I believe, in this Magius here is what I go into, or Hydreigon, one or the other. Uh, I go into Hydreigon, okay, so now I'm threatening him with a Dark Pulse. So I'm like, okay, I can stay in here and I can probably either Roost or Dark Pulse, uh, and now I can't remember what I ultimately decided to do. I think it was just Dark Pulse, uh, as that is what I go for, yeah. I weaken the Empoleon down to the point uh, where it, it can't take another Dark Pulse, so I'm just going to here I weigh my options actually, and I look at it and I'm like, okay, I don't want to lower, I don't want to show him uh, superpower just yet 
because that's kind of uh, not yeah, that's kind of hindering me for the uh, later portion of the game when I have to lock, knock out Tyranitar and Excadrill. So here I'm just like, okay, well, you know what? Uh, I'm just gonna switch out. I'm gonna conserve this thing's health, and I'm gonna go right out into Scizor as he decides to torrent boosted scald me uh, on my Hydreigon, revealing that he probably didn't have Ice Beam. Luckily, we do not get burned. And after the burn damage, this was a roll on Offensive Empoleon, but I decided to just bullet punch and get this thing out of the way in case it was faster than me, which it could have been. So now, we're in with Edward, our Mega Scizor, as my opponent goes out into his Weezing. So, I know that I'm heavily speed invested, I outspeed max speed, modest Weezing, so I'm gonna go for a U-turn, get a little bit of chip damage on this thing, and here I decide, I think this is where I go into Miss Magius this time. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so I go into Miss Magius. This, the reason I went into Miss Magius was uh, I wanted to take a potential Sludge Bomb or Flamethrower. I knew I could take them. And I also wanted to Will-O-Wisp something on his team. So here I'm going to decide to just throw off a Willow as he actually pulls a switch into his Tyranitar, which is kind of what I expected because it, it uh, pretty much nukes me with a Pursuit afterwards. Uh, he switches into Nuh, his Tyranitar. We're going to Wisp it, burn it. And now I'm going to uh, see what kind of set he is by going for taunt. I want to prevent him from getting up rocks potentially. So I'm just going to taunt this thing. And uh, he's actually going to hit me with a pursuit. And I didn't calc this right away, but I calc it on the following turn. And I saw that his pursuit was actually a banded pursuit. Because it should never have been doing that much if I actually stayed in. We are max defense bold. So here I'm going to pain split, get back a little bit of health. Weaken this Tyranitar in the process, give it 22% damage. It's going to take... Uh, burn after I get hit by a pursuit, and then I'm going to be able to heal bell uh, my Slowbro's Toxic away, which is kind of the point that I uh, brought heal bell for, was to make sure that Slowbro was in status for late game because it still needed to take on Lopany and the Excadrill. So I get pursuited right here. Focus is going to go down, unfortunately, but that's okay because now I get a free switch out into uh, something that can take a pursuit, which is Hydreigon. And uh, Hydreigon comes in, and I'm gonna roost off the damage as he actually goes into T on um, into Excadrill, excuse me, on his last turn of Sand. So he's actually not going to be able to outspeed me on, on the next turn. Well, he is, but he doesn't know that uh, because I could be heavily speed invested. Uh, invested. I only have 244 speed, four Tyranitar. But here I calced Iron Head, which is the only thing he could hit me with because he wasn't Mold Breaker. And I decided because it wasn't doing enough damage, I was gonna Superpower. And he goes in a Lopany on my Superpower and gets it O Code. So Lola got to use two fake outs during the entire game and nothing else. Lopany did not move. So I was extremely happy at this point because the biggest offensive threat on his team was gone. So now he's going to go into Mesprit. I'm going to switch out predicting this thing to go for an Ice Beam. I'm still under the impression that this thing is offensive. But here he actually decides to Dazzling Gleam. And I'm like, okay, well that would have hurt even more. I'm glad I got out of there. Slowbro is going to be able to heal off a little bit of damage. And at this point, I think I'm just going to throw out Scalds. He goes for Rocks, which I didn't expect his Mesprit to be his Rocker because he had a Tyranitar. So he goes for Scald. Uh, Berlin goes for Scald, does 25%, very nice. We do not see Leftovers on this thing either, which means I can 4-hit KO this. I go for Scald again, as he goes for Grass Knot, finally revealing his full move set. And uh, Scald is going to do another 27 here, and now I can just slack off the damage, and he will never be able to 1v1 me, unless he crits the, uh, unless he crits every single Grass Knot. Here he's going to U-turn out into his Tyranitar, and I'm going to slack off the damage, keeping me at about 94% after the sand. And his Tyranitar is burnt. It cannot do anything to me. Here he predicts me to uh, to switch out of my Slowbro. Uh, but he's burnt. Again, he cannot hit me super hard, even if he's banded. Uh, so I'm going to stay in as he goes for Pursuit, and I just go for the slack off here. And uh, I'm going to slack off again on the following turn, as you guys will see, because I want to be at full health for the Excadrill, for the Mesprit, and for the Weezing. Uh, he's actually going to switch out of his Tyranitar, conserving it. I don't know exactly why he conserved it with 4%, uh, but I guess he wanted to keep Sand, but he actually brings it in on the last turn of Sand and lets it die to Poison later, as you guys will see. I go for Slack Off again here, like I said, just to keep Berlin alive, because I do not want it going down uh, to a uh, random crit or getting extremely weakened because Excadrill is still in the back and it still has the threat of Excisor. So his Weezing comes in. I know how much it can do to me. It's not too much. He actually goes for Wisp and misses as I'm able to knock him out with the Psychic. So very unfortunate for Jose. 
Uh, I feel really bad about that, but uh, in the grand scheme of things, I did say sorry. He said he pro it probably didn't matter too much, uh, which he's probably right as well, as you guys will see in a bit. Uh, he now goes into his Tyranitar again on his last turn of sand, so I was like, okay. Uh, he actually switches it out, which is a good play. Uh, as I'm going to go for a slack off, I guess he baited me to go for that um, by bringing in his T-Tar. I'm going to go for the slack off, and now his Mesprit is sitting at 48, which means it's two-hit KO'd by my Scald. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to throw out a Scald right here. As he goes for a Grass Knot, and does 40% to me, uh, which is quite a bit, considering it's a Grass Knot. Uh, I'm actually going to throw out a Toxic, excuse me. So Mesprit is going to slowly go down to Toxic, as I just get to slack off, never having to attack this thing, and I can get right back up to full. So it's a little bit of a stall war uh, between uh, Toxic and, and stalling against the Banded T-Tar to make sure I don't get weakened. And this Mesprit is eventually going to go down. So this is going to be uh, Slowbro's second kill. He never crits me with Grass Knot either. Luckily, we are able to take every single one of them and uh, end up at a very good amount of health. And we are back up to 96 after this turn. He goes down to the next round of poison, I believe. Yep, so he'll go down after this turn. And I get to slack off right back up to full. Uh, he does do 43% once again. That is the highest roll, I believe. And uh, we are able to slack off the damage. And Mesprit is going to go down, giving Berlin its second kill of the match. And now he goes into T-Tar just to start up the sand again. Uh, again, my play is always 100% to slack off on the T-Tar. It's burned. It's going to go down to itself. Uh, to its own burn from Miss Magius's burn, so Miss Magius is actually going to get a, a kill here. Uh, Crunch also does 43%, just like Grass Knot, and I'm able to slack off the damage. Luckily, he does not get a defense drop, because that would have actually mattered right here, as you guys will see in a bit. Um, luckily, I had a Scarf th a Thunderous in the back, which would have been, uh, eventually been able to kill the Excadrill after the Sand wore off, but it would have been tough. Uh, so he goes into Excadrill, he reveals the X Scissor, and he actually crits me here. And I go down to 28% and I was scared at this point. I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna lose my slow to this and I go for Skull and it actually crits him as well. So uh, that's gonna be the game. We are able to beat Jose 5-0, which I never thought I would be able to uh, to accomplish. This is actually a very tough matchup for me. Good game to Jose. Uh, the Montreal Havsals are now 3-1 uh, and one in the NBA with a plus 11 differential, which is uh, insane for a 3 and one record actually. Uh, we lost our game 1-0, the only uh, game that we lost to Eric. So, uh, that's going to be it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the battle. Uh, I hope you're enjoying cheering us on in the NBA. Uh, we're doing pretty well, a lot better than the uh, than the UPA. Uh, and this is pretty high comp a pretty high level of competition regardless. So, uh, luckily we aren't getting hacked out either. We hacked out Colton, but uh, I'm not sure exactly how the game would have gone if we didn't get that para on the uh, Magmortar. It would have been uh, left to see, but... Uh, the uh, the toxic Jirachi, of course, and everything. So, um, good game again to Jose. Glad we were able to pull out that win. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to see more of these league matches, uh, if you want to see any of the lives that I put out daily during the week, and uh, that's gonna be it, guys. Thanks again for watching. I will catch you guys later. Ciao.